Yes, thank you very much for the invitation. A polytope is a convex sum of finitely many points. If we take these points at random, we obtain what is called a random polytope. And everything depends, of course, on the joint law of the points. Now, it is natural to take points which are independent and identically distributed according to some probability measure. And in these lectures, I will concentrate on random polytopes, which are constructed as convex hulls of IID points having a so-called beta density or a beta prime density. As we shall see in this lecture, these polytopes have multiple interpretations in stochastic geometry. They appear at various places. Now let me define the densities we are interested in. The beta density is a probability density on the unit ball in the d-dimensional space. So BD is the unit ball and I call it FD beta. Beta is a parameter and the density at X is one minus minus the squared norm of x to the power beta times a constant, times a constant, which plays no role in the future, but let me write it down just once. It is some constant involving gamma functions. So it's gamma of d half plus beta plus one divided by gamma of beta plus one times pi to the power d half. This is defined for x smaller than, or maybe just smaller than one. So it's a density on the unit ball. Now beta is a parameter here and the possible values of beta are greater than, all values greater than minus one. Then this function is integrable on the unit ball. And the constant is fine. You see here in the gamma function, there is a singularity at beta equals minus one. Now there are some special cases of this density which are particularly interesting. First of all, if beta equals to zero, then we just have the uniform distribution on the unit ball. Then this density is constant and it, is, it, is, it must be a uniform distribution. The second special case, assume that beta converges to minus one. What happens to this probability distribution as beta converges to minus one? Well, we claim, this is our claim, that this density or this probability distribution converges weakly to the uniform distribution on the sphere, on the boundary of the ball. Of course, the sphere is d minus one dimensional. Here as D minus one is the unit sphere in the d-dimensional space. The idea of the proof. First of all, the space of probability measures on the unit ball is compact by Halley's theorem or by Prokhorov's theorem, which means that these probability distributions have subsequential limits. Any subsequential limit of this probability distribution must be concentrated on the unit sphere. So, first of all, first of all, there, there exist subsequential limits. And now, what we are going to prove is that any subsequential limit is this uniform distribution on the unit sphere. And this is because, first of all, any subsequential limit. is concentrated on the unit sphere because if we look at the constant, then the constant converges as beta goes to minus one to zero because of this gamma function it converges to infinity. So the constant converges to zero, which means that the density converges to zero uniformly on, com on compact subsets of the open unit ball and Thus, the open unit ball has measure zero in the limit, roughly speaking. And this was the first observation. And the second observation is that since any of these densities is rotationally invariant, any subsequential limit must preserve this property. So any subsequential limit 
is a rotational invariant under the orthogonal group. And from these two properties, it follows that any subsequential limit must be the uniform distribution on the unit sphere. So the case beta, I, I will just write beta equals to minus one and mu the uniform distribution on the sphere by this. And finally, the third special case of this setting is if beta goes to infinity, to plus infinity. What happens then? Well, uh, let us denote by x of beta a random variable which has this probability distribution, probability density. Then we claim that if beta goes to infinity, or as beta goes to infinity, the random variable square root of two beta times x of beta converges weakly to the Gaussian distribution on the d-dimensional space, to the standard Gaussian distribution. Now, this can be seen as follows. We just write down the density of this random variable of the square root of two beta times x of beta, and it has the following form. It, it is some constant depending on beta, of course, times and uh, not depending on beta, uh, or um, maybe it depends on beta, but it doesn't matter, times one minus x squared divided by two beta to the power beta. Just because if I want to compute the density of this random variable, I have to insert instead of x, I have to insert x divided by square root of two beta, and I have done this. And now if we ignore the constant, then this converges to the e to the power minus x squared half. And we can also compute the limit of the constant. And so we have pointwise convergence to the probability, to the standard normal probability density. And by Shafir's lemma, this implies the weak convergence of the probability distributions. We have just pointwise convergence of the densities. So these are three special cases of the beta distribution. By the way, it has been it has been introduced by Miles and Ruben and Miles, at least in the literature on stochastic geometry. And what we are interested in is the so-called beta polytop. So the definition beta polytop, I denote it by P and D beta, but maybe you don't need to remember all this notation. It's just a convex hull of n points, which are distributed according to this density and which are independent. So we take in the unit in the in the unit ball well how to switch it off <laughs> I'm sorry I can I cannot switch some program off yeah, okay. So we just take endpoints in the unit pole according to this density and take the convex hull. And this convex hull is called the beta polytop. Now, the question we shall be interested in is the following one. We want to compute the expected number of k dimensional faces of this polytop. So, fk of some polytop is the number of k-dimensional phases of this polytop. For example, F0 is the number of vertices and Fd minus one is the number of hyper phases. And we want to compute the expected value of this quantity exactly. So not just asymptotically, but exactly. Now, I, uh, just a very brief history of this problem is missing many contributions is as follows, questions of this type have been studied since the work of Remy and Solange, who mostly considered the case d equals to two. Um, now, 
in the case of simple co-dimensions and dimensions, for example, if k is equal to d minus one or k is equal to d minus two or to zero. So if, if k is zero or d minus one or d minus two, then there are results by Buchta, Müller, and Lichy, and another set of results by, I think, uh, who have explicit formulas for this quantity. The proofs use methods from stochastic geometry. And finally, there is a work by Affentrana and Schneider, who considered the case beta equals infinity, which means they consider the so-called Gaussian polytope. So a convex hull of IID points with the Gaussian distribution and they have explicit formula for all K. And there are also many asymptotic results as n goes to infinity. So suppose the number of generating points goes to infinity, then this polytope approaches the unit ball or the boundary of the unit ball and one of these results is the following theorem of Matthias Heitzner. It says that the expected number of k faces of the polytope P and D, say with beta equals to zero, if, if the distribution is uniform, is asymptotic to some constant depending on k and on the dimension times some power of n to the power d minus one plus d plus one. This is as n goes to infinity. And there are also central limit theorems for the number of k-dimensional k phases. But in, in this talk and in the next lectures, I will be only interested in explicit formulas. Now, this is the definition of the beta polytops. Later in the next lecture, I will explain the properties of the beta distributions, they have some remarkable properties which allow for explicit computations. Now, there is another class of distributions very similar to the beta distributions and called beta prime distributions. In some sense, beta prime distributions are even more interesting because they have many interpretations as I will try to explain in this lecture. So the beta prime density on the d-dimensional space, it's not restricted to the unit ball, is the following one. It's a function called fd beta tilde. Unfortunately, I cannot denote it by fd beta prime because it would be like a derivative. And it is defined as some constant, a different one, times one, one plus x squared. x squared is the squared norm of x to the power minus beta. Here x is in Rd and Cd beta is again some constant which plays no role in the sequel. It's gamma of beta divided by, by d half beta minus d half. And from this constant, we see that the integral converges if beta is greater than d half because then we have a singularity. So beta, beta is here parameter, uh, parameter, of the problem and it is greater than d half. Now, uh, I will, in this lecture, I will explain how many models of stochastic geometry can be reduced to convex house from this beta prime density. So a beta, beta prime polytope is defined as follows. It's a convex house from, from this density. So beta prime polytope noted by P and D beta tilde is just a convex hull of n points where x i have this, maybe I call them x, one x n tilde, where x i tilde have this probability density and are independent. Now, let me mention some special cases 
of this density. First of all, the case when beta is equal to d plus one half is called the d-dimensional Cauchy distribution. And I will explain in a moment why this distribution is called Cauchy. In dimension d equals to one, it is clear because then we have one plus x squared minus to the power minus one, it's the classical Cauchy distribution. But it is also called Cauchy in higher dimensions. I will explain in a moment why. And finally, the second special case is when beta goes to plus infinity. Then again, we have convergence to the Gaussian distribution, exactly in the same way as above. We just have here plus and here minus, and we can use the same, the same formula. So we have this converges to the same thing. Now, let me try to explain how some models of stochastic geometry, some natural questions, reduce to these beta, beta prime polytopes. So models that reduce beta prime polytopes. The first one is called convex house, uh, convex cones, random convex cones in a half space. Or equivalently convex house on a half sphere. The setting is as follows. Consider random vectors u1, u2, and so on that are uniformly distributed on the unit sphere. Or more precisely on the unit half sphere, where SD plus, SD plus is the d-dimensional half sphere in the d plus one dimensional space defined as follows. We consider all points x0, xd with d plus one coordinates in R d plus one such that, well, first of all, the sum of the coordinates is one, and also the first coordinate is non-negative. So it, it defines a half sphere. And then we take a convex hull or a positive hull of these points. So we consider the random cone Cn defined as the positive hull of U1 n. It is contained in the upper half space. So it's, it's a random cone which is contained in the upper half space. And by the way, the positive hull is just a set of all combinations of all linear combinations of these points, i from 1 to n, with non-negative coefficients. So we do the following. We take a half sphere. This is in D equals one. So this half sphere is dimensional. This is coordinate X zero. Here we have all the other coordinates X one and so on X D. And we take here points on the half sphere U I. And generate a cone. In this case, this is our cone. And now we are interested in various quantities related to this cone. For example, in the angle of the cone and in the number of k-dimensional phases of the cone. The model just described has been introduced by Hook, Witzner, and Schneider. who proved the following result. The limit of the number of one dimensional, of the expected number of the one dimensional phases of this cone. So in, in this case, we have two one dimensional phases, for example, but in general, one dimensional phases are 
the spanning directions of the cone. So they proved that, they proved that surprisingly, this limit is finite. So it exists and it is smaller than infinity, which is a little bit strange. Now, I will explain in a moment why this is so. There is a rather simple reason. And in another work, we extended this result to phases of any dimension. So the limit of number of the expected number of the key dimensional phases of Cn as n goes to infinity n is the number of generating vectors here exists. And moreover, the quantity fk of Cn converges in distribution to something. Some non-trivial random variable in the limit. Uh, Saka? Yes. Yes. Um, can, can, hi, can you add um, Imre Baran to the list of three authors? Who writes the who? Imre was one of Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, of course. Uh, it's your first name. I'm sorry. Yes, of course. <laughs> I, I thought about your another paper at the moment. <laughs> That's why I uh, have a different one on a similar topic. So um, now the, the reason for this convergence, so a simple reason for the convergence is the following one. Let us consider here a tangent hyper, hyperplane, which is also RD, it's a D-dimensional. It's a tangent hyperplane to the sphere at the North Pole. And let us project everything to this tangent hyperplane. So we extend all these vectors. And then we get here in this hyperplane, a polytope, a section of the cone CN, so this, this cone with Cn, and we get its section, which is a polytope. And let us call these points here, these projections, Vi. And now it is easy to check that if Ui are uniformly distributed on the upper half sphere, then Vi are Cauchy distributed. So they have distribution the beta prime distribution with parameter d plus one half. So beta, this parameter is beta, is d plus one half, and it is exactly the special case I mentioned on the first page. And this is why it is called the Cauchy distribution, because there is a well-known interpretation of the Cauchy distribution in one dimension as exactly as what is shown in this picture. So we take a random direction and it, it intersects this line and the, the point where it intersects is the is Cauchy distributed if the direction is uniform. Now in, in D dimensions, this, this distribution is a special case of the beta prime distribution. And this means that the section of Cn namely Cn with this tangent space intersected with the tangent space is nothing else but a beta, beta prime polytope. So it is Pn d with parameter d plus one half. This is the first interpretation of beta prime polytopes as a section of such a cone. And now what happens if the number of generating points goes to infinity? So if n goes to infinity. Well, first of all, this polytope or this cone approaches half space. It becomes larger and larger and it approaches the half space, which means that the polytope gets larger and larger. But now there are results from extreme value theory which say what happens to the sample vi as i goes to infinity. So let, let us take n points distributed according to this Cauchy density and normalize them. Let us take the points vi over n 
divide them by n and let us consider a point process which counts these points so we have we take n points with coefficients to divide them by n and consider a point process which counts them now what is the limit of this point process as n go, as n goes to infinity the weak limit in the sense of point processes to give an answer just look at the density of the point vi divided by n now the density of vi is 1 plus uh, is i'm sorry it is 1 over it is 1 over 1 plus x squared to the power g plus 1 half this is the density of vi now if i divide it by n the following happens i have to multiply x by n here so i also have n squared and i also have to multiply the whole density by n to the power g it's a transformation of densities and now if n goes to infinity then this is asymptotic if n goes to infinity this one disappears and we have one divided by x to the power d plus one times one over n so the density of this point is asymptotic to one over n at, at every fixed x x is here fixed now if we take some domain in the d-dimensional space then the measure or the probability measure of this domain or the probability that this point is in this domain is 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 going to decay like one over n times the integral of this function over this domain now if we take n points then the number of points which are in in some domain converges to the poisson distribution by the poisson limit theorem and the parameter of this poisson distribution is the integral of this function over the domain so in the limit we get a poisson point process with intensity which is some constant i missed the constant here of course so the constant is missing here um, which is some constant divided by x to the power d plus one and in fact there is a theorem in the book of resnick by on extreme value theory which states a general condition un under which such convergence holds so in the limit we have such a Poisson point process and now it is possible to show that if these points converge as a point process then the convex hull of these points converge to the convex hull of the Poisson point process but of course we need to know how this Poisson point process looks like first of all and it's easy to check that the integral of this function over the complement of any ball around the origin is finite so the integral of this function is finite in at infinity and this means that the number of points outside any ball is finite so we have a point with the maximal distance to zero a point with the second largest distance and so on and at zero the points concentrate there are infinitely more many points there because the integral of this function one over x to the power d plus one is infinite over the unit ball for example or over any ball around zero so this is how this some point process looks like and the convex hull of this Poisson point process is the limit of the beta prime polytope divided by n but we are interested only in the number of faces for example here in any dimension which means that well it's it's not a proof of course it has to be something has to be done in order to prove this but we know that the these points v1 vn or more precisely they convex, their convex hull which is the beta prime polytope divided by n this converges to the convex hull of the Poisson point process with the above intensity weakly on some space of say on the space of convex sets endowed with the Hausdorff metric and from this it is possible to deduce again with some work that the number of faces converges in distribution so the number of faces of this polytop and the scaling plays no role now converges in distribution to the number of faces of the convex hull of the Poisson point process again this requires some work because the number of faces is not a continuous function of the of the convex body of course but 
with some work, it is possible to show that there is such a distribution convergence and that also that there is a convergence of expectations. So one, one can write expectation and get convergence of expectations. So this explains why this surprising result that the limit is finite holds just because we have a distribution limit in some sense. Now, for this reason, let us introduce one more model of random polytops that are related to the convex hulls of such Poisson point process. Let uh, us. Uh, uh, can I ask Helen quick, please? So, yes, of course, please. Is it, is it uh, well, I must assume, maybe this is wrong, but is the number of uh, faces FK, is it, you know, this probability one with respect to the limit measure? Is it what? Is it is it finite or? No, so the, the number of uh, vertices is not continuous, but maybe it's continuous with uh, with probability one with respect to the limit. Uh, it so should be. In other words, it, 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 so what's what's behind this step, which which you skipped? Um, okay, so we have to prove that there is a subset in the space of convex bodies which has on which has measure one with respect to this distribution of the limit and where this is continuous and i think this is true ah, so this is what you use. okay this is true i think this is true so yes ah, thanks yes so uh, the, the problem is how to construct a subset on of probability one with respect to the limit measure under which this on which this is continuous and this can be done explicitly. So mm -hmm. it's not the space of whole, all convex bodies, it's some subset of it and one can do it. So yes, it's, it's mm -hmm. uh, indeed this, this step, I think this last step is not so difficult. Okay. Now, the, let us define a more general model, namely let pi with parameters d alpha be a Poisson point process with intensity, uh, which is constant, I will ignore constants in the following, to the power of times x to the power times the norm of x to the power minus d minus alpha. And the parameter alpha is here greater than zero because under this assumption, the integral of this function over the complement of any ball around the origin is finite, which means that we have the same picture, essentially the same picture as here with the maximal point, the second maximal and so on. And we have clustering at zero un under this assumption. If we take alpha smaller than zero, then everything gets inverted. Then there are infinitely many points at infinity and finitely many at zero, but we don't need it. Now the convex cell of this Poisson point process is a polytope. It, it can be shown. So the convex how of all points, the number is infinite, but still the convex how is a polytope. And for example, we have shown that the section of the random cone in a subspace converges to a special case, to pi d1. And we shall call this Poisson point or Poisson polyhedron or something like this. Now let me describe another model which is closely related to this one and which also reduces to the beta prime polytops or to these Poisson polytops which can be thought of as limits of, as of beta prime polytops. Because if we take a beta prime polytop with general beta, not necessarily of the form d plus one half, we can take d plus alpha half, say. Then in the limit, we get in a very similar way this Poisson polytope. So let me now describe the next model, B, which also reduces to beta prime polytopes. And it is called the zero cell of, it is called the Poisson zero cell. So, uh, to define it, we need the Poisson hyperplane tessellation. The Poisson hyperplane 
solution defined as follows. We consider here a special case, which is isotropic. It is defined as follows. Oh, I'm sorry. We take a d-dimensional space and we want to throw in this d-dimensional space infinitely many hyperplanes at random, uniformly isotropically at random. And this can be done in the following way. Take some coordinate, this is just one coordinate. And this is the orthogonal complement of this coordinate. It is d minus one dimensional. And now on this coordinate, take a Poisson process with intensity one. So this is Poisson process with intensity one. And then for each point, consider a hyperplane, which is orthogonal to this point. So all these are hyperplanes. They are d minus one dimensional. Now, what is shown here is a Poisson hyperplane tessellation, but it is not isotropic. It has one specified direction. All hyperplanes have the same direction. In order to make it isotropic, we need to make the directions random. And this is done in the following way. For every hyperplane, choose some random direction on the unit sphere, uniformly on the unit sphere. And rotate this hyperplane without changing the distance to the origin. Here is the origin. And by the way, this hyperplane, so this one, is not in the Poisson process, is not there. All others are there. So th this is the origin. And now just rotate any hyperplane in a random way, uniformly, without changing the distance to the origin. And what, what is a result looks as follows. So here is the first one, then the second one, the third one, and so on. And now it can be shown that this construction is stationary. So this is not quite clear from the way we construct it is. It is indeed stationary, which means it stays invariant under shifts of the d-dimensional space. And what we are interested in is the so-called zero cell. It's just the polytop, uh, more precisely, so the hyperplanes dissect the space into cells, into polytops, I'm sorry. So they dissect the space into polytops and we take the polytop which contains the origin. It is almost surely unique. And it is called the Poisson zero cell. So this is Poisson zero cell. Let us call it Z with index D because it is d-dimensional. And now we claim that this cell ZD is related to the beta prime polytop or more precisely to this Poisson polyhedron construction just by duality. So we claim that, we claim, I'm sorry, we claim that ZD is the same as the dual of phi D1, the dual polytop, up to constants. I ignore here, no, uh, I ignore here constants, so maybe I have to multiply it here by a constant. Now, in order to argue that this is the case, let us, oh, we have no time. Okay. <laughs> Uh, good, uh, let, let us argue that this is the case. Well, let us look at the dual of phi d alpha with general alpha. Now, first of all, phi d alpha can be constructed or can be simulated in the following way. We can first simulate the directions which are just uniformly distributed on the unit sphere and iid so phi i are the directions of the points and they are uniform on the sphere and iid and then we multiply these directions by the distances i from one to infinity the distances there are infinitely many of them and it is easy to check that they form a Poisson point process with the following intensity it is one divided by x to the power d plus alpha, which is the intensity of the original process, or let me write here r. r is the distance to the origin. But then we have the polar integration formula in which we have 
r to the power d minus one. So the result is the Poisson point process with intensity one over r to the power alpha plus one on the positive half line on r class. So the distances of the points from this Poisson process form a Poisson point process on the half line on the half line with this intensity. And now, if we want to construct the dual of this polytope, what shall we do? Well, this polytope, the Poisson polytope pi d alpha, is defined as a convex hull of some points. The dual polytope will be the intersection of the polar hyperplane to these points. So for every point which has distance, say, r1, so here we have distance r1 to the origin, for every point we have to take the inversion with respect to the unit sphere, which means that we consider a point at distance one over r1 in the same direction, and we take a hyperplane. And now the dual construction of the convex hull is the intersection of the hyperplanes, which means that we have to do it for, for every point. So for every point, we take the same, so for every point here on, the, on this picture, at distance ri, we take a point at distance one over ri and construct a hyperplane and so on. And now here the ri's are decreasing to zero. In the, on this picture, one over our eyes are increasing to infinity, which means that our, our hyperplanes will, we, we, we will get more and more hyperplanes as we go to infinity. And we get such a picture. And on this picture, there is a zero polytope here. And this is the dual. This is the dual of pi d alpha. And this is pi d alpha. And now the dual is defined as an intersection of hyperplanes, exactly as in the case of the Poisson point process. And the only thing to verify is the joint distribution of these hyperplanes. Now the directions are uniform. The directions are uniform IID. And the only thing we have to compute is the law of this one over R i's. Now, if we take a Poisson process and map it by some map, then the result is also a Poisson process. So the points one over R i, the points one over R i, also form a Poisson process on R plus, and the intensity of this Poisson process can be computed by, by, by transformation formula for the Poisson process, and it turns out to be x to the power alpha minus one x is greater than zero. And now if alpha is equal to one, then this is a homogeneous Poisson point process and we are back to, we are back here. We have exactly this construction. We have a Poisson, we have a homogeneous Poisson process on the positive half line. Well, it doesn't matter if we take here a half line or a whole line. And then we just rotate all these hyperplanes by, by random directions and get, take the intersection. So. The Poisson, uh, Poisson polytope is the dual of the Poisson zero cell. Now um, we have two minutes more, two more minutes. Let me mention the last model of, which can be reduced to beta prime polytopes and it is the Poisson Voronoi cell. Uh, it is the typical cell, I'm sorry, it is the typical cell of the poisson voronoi tessellation. To construct it, let P1, P2, and so on be points of the Poisson point process on the d-dimensional space with intensity one. So it is, I'm sorry, it has intensity one, constant intensity on, our, on the d-dimensional space. And now we can define for any point the cell of this point, which consists of all points, which for any point pi, I mean, we can define the cell generated by this point, which consists of all points x, which have a smaller distance to pi than to any other of the points of the Poisson process. And the typical cell is 
uh, this is, is if we take this construction viewed from the typical point. And let me just take this point to be zero. Then the typical cell is defined as follows. It is the set of all points in RD such that the distance of this point to zero is smaller than the distance to this point to any pi i. Pi. So we take a Poisson process in RD. We add to this Poisson point process zero. So this is the origin. And then we construct a polytop which consists of all points which have smaller distance to zero than to any other point, than to any point of the Poisson point process. And now how can we reduce this to beta prime polytops? This is actually very easy. Let us look at the same picture again. So here we have zero and let us take some point of the Poisson point process, some point PI. Then the set of points which of points X, which are closer to zero than to PI is a half space. So it is a half space and the, to construct this half space, I have to divide this interval in two equal sub intervals and draw a hyperplane here. This hyperplane separates points which are closer to zero to the ones which are closer to PI and the Poisson Voronoi cell the typical Poisson Voronoi cell is defined as the intersection of all such hyperplanes. And now the directions of these hyperplanes are again uniform. So the directions to these points are uniformly distributed and IAD. And the only thing are the distances. So the only thing to care about are the distances to the points PI. Now the distances form, so the distances PI, form a Poisson point process on the real line. And the intensity of this Poisson point process can be again computed by the mapping theorem. Now, how, how to do this? So the, the claim is it is up to constant, r to the power d minus one. And this, is, this r to the power d minus one is the same r to the power d minus one, which appears in the polar integration formula. But to, to, to prove this, we can do the following, just compute how many points are how many norms, norm of PI are smaller than say some number S. Now the norm of PI is smaller than S if and only if the point PI is in the ball of radius S. And the volume of the ball of radius S is S to the power D times, times constant. So this means that the measure, the intensity measure of this Poisson point process assigns to an interval, to an interval from zero to S, MS, which is constant times S to the power D. This is the measure of the interval. And now the intensity is the derivative of that. So it is S to the power D minus one times constant. And now we have the following thing. We have here an intersection of hyperplanes. The directions of the hyperplanes are uniform, IAD, whereas the distances to the origin form a Poisson point process with this intensity. And we have seen that this is the dual construction to the Poisson polyhedron. Namely, we see that this Poisson zero cell, uh, that this typical Voronoi cell is the dual of the Poisson polyhedron with alpha equals to D. It is the dual one up to constant again. So there are two special cases of this Poisson polyhedron which reduce to the Uh, which reduced to well-known models in stochastic geometry. And now let me just very briefly mention that uh, the same construction can be done on the sphere. So here we have con con considered tessellations, Poisson hyperplate tessellations or Poisson Voronoi tessellation over the flat space. The same can be done on the sphere. And it also reduces. So, so we can do constructions B and C on the sphere, and they also reduce to beta prime polytops. So we can, for example, we can in, uh, take a tessellation on the sphere generated by n hyperplanes and take the cell of some fixed point, say the North Pole, 
and the cell is going to be dual to a beta prime polytope, for example. Now, uh, we have to finish and the plan of the following two lectures will be the following. Our aim is to compute some quantities related to the, or expect values of some quantities related to beta and beta prime polytopes. Mostly we shall be interested in the number of phases in dimension K. In the next lecture, I will present the properties of the, of the beta distributions, which are, which are special to this class of distributions and which allow us to do explicit computations with them. So as you may see, here is lecture two and here's a section called paintings. It's a surprise, you shall see, you will see the meaning of, <laughs> of this section in the next lecture. Okay, let me stop here. <laughs>